It's often said that the winter holidays are made for children. And indeed, that's true in so many ways. When we think of our holidays in the winter as adult, we're reminded of so much stress and so much strain and often so much grief that the winter holidays are often difficult times for us or conflicting times or complicated times. And it doesn't matter which holiday you're celebrating, whether that's Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa, they all come with a complexity from our focusing on preparation to memories of people lost to so many other things happening in our lives. Yet we sing songs like, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And we're not sure if it is. Today, I want to talk a little bit about how we move into the winter holidays and what it is that we're remembering in the winter holidays. As I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button, as well as to click that bell so you're notified of future videos. So, you know, the holidays have really become commercialized. And in that commercialization, we've been led to believe that this year should be bigger and better than last year, and it always should be absolutely fantastic and amazing. And that's just not reality. The expectations are high, and reality is on a different plane. I know for myself, looking back over my life, that the Christmases that I've celebrated, the most special ones were when I was a kid. I didn't have any worries or concerns, but magically, our home filled up with people and gifts and food and laughter and celebration. And I just had a ball. And sometimes, you know, there was snow so that we could go out sled riding and do all kinds of things. As an adult, that's a little bit different. I have those memories and I appreciate those memories. But the truth is most of those people that gathered in my parents' home, they're no longer around, they've passed. And today, when my partner and I celebrate the Christmas holiday, it's generally just the two of us because his family's in another country. And I appreciate the holiday and the time we spend. But I'm aware that it wasn't what it once was, and it wasn't this fantabulous image of what the holiday should be. I appreciate the simplicity and the quiet that we share but it causes me to reflect more on what the holiday is about. And I think there's something that we need to look at in a larger perspective as adults about the meaning of the winter holidays. And as I talk, you'll see that there's a similar saga that plays out in the three major winter holidays. You know, I'll start with Christmas, which is my holiday. Christmas for me, yeah, the birth of Jesus is, is a nice story, but we don't really know when Jesus was born. But the saga explains to us that Jesus was born in a moment in history where a people were occupied by a foreign nation, and that foreign nation overtaxed them, and people had difficulty making it through and weren't sure what was going to come next. When would that next shoe drop? And it was in that context that hope was born. Yes, it was hope born as a baby, and that was surely a gift to that family. But what people saw was that star, that light, that drew them to something that caused them to wonder, to lead them into awe. A star shining in the darkness that was a symbol of hope, that remains a symbol of hope for us. In other words, the saga of Christmas is rooted in people's hardship. And in the darkness of that hardship, having the faith, having the fortitude to hope, to hope in the darkness for something bright and shining in the future. And I think that's a powerful, powerful image. And it's that same image that we find in the story of Hanukkah, Again, a people politically occupied and trying to overthrow their occupiers, caught in fierce battle. Their supplies are cut off. They don't have food. They don't have many things. And 
somehow in that dire, dire situation, the lamp in the temple continues to burn, even though there, there was no oil in the city. And it burns for a week. And it's for that reason, the candles of the menorah are lit throughout Hanukkah to be a reminder of that light shining on in darkness, the darkness of political oppression, the darkness that surrounds us in so many ways. Similarly, Kwanzaa, celebrated by a people who were stolen from their land, enslaved in another part of the world, and in that lost their identity, their culture, lost everything, and yet somehow made it through they made it through until today where they celebrate and remember the strength and the virtues that brought the people through the hardship. And so the candles of Kwanzaa are lit each night, remembering those virtues, those strengths, the things that brought the people through. All of our winter holidays celebrate hope hope and resiliency, the ability to find light no matter the darkness of life. And that's a very ancient, ancient symbol. It's the kind of symbolism that's rooted in the winter solstice celebrations that were marked in different cultures around the world, whether we know that today from Stonehenge or from the Mayans or from the ancient city of Petra, that this image of light returning, the light building, was a symbol of hope, a symbol of the future. So today, as we think about the struggles we face, those struggles may be from the loss of loved ones, particularly during the pandemic, or perhaps the inflation we're facing and, and, and the income not keeping up with inflation or global warming or whatever the myriad issues are. The winter holidays are not a distraction, but the winter holidays are an opportunity to renew our hope, to seek vision, to remember that light shines in darkness and the darkness will not vanquish it. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, leave me some comments, and above all, happy holidays.